Business and the economy were also tackled in the recently concluded ASEAN Summit. Let's discuss this some more with Joey Concepcion, Chairman of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council for the Philippines. Sir Joey, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Among the topics discussed in the ASEAN Summit, of course, were developing MSMEs and digitalization. Can you share with us what key points were discussed and if you were satisfied with the targets that have been set? Well, uh, definitely, Sean, I was quite uh, happy with the results though, because uh, every year we present to the ASEAN uh, leaders, uh, there are 10 of them, uh, President Marcos, uh, his first time to attend the ASEAN event uh, since he became president. And uh, my, my position to the ASEAN leaders was to really push for uh, our program, no, which we call the ASEAN Mentorship for Entrepreneurship Network. Uh, it is similar to what we're doing here in the Philippines where we uh, help our MSME scale up uh, because the objective is to generate more jobs for our people. And so uh, for the past over close to two years now, that program has been funded by JAIF. It's a Japan agency fund and we are on our second phase. So I explained to the leaders the goal of uh, equal opportunity or creating prosperity that we don't stop at our own countries being more prosperous, but we have to look at uh, not leaving any other country behind, you know, the 10 ASEAN countries being, let us do it together and help those who are lagging behind move up the, the ladder. And so, uh, and uh, MSMEs are the heart of job generation. That's very clear. clear. In fact, a contribution to the GDP is quite high. You know? uh, the GDP contribution there is about 45% and 85% on employment. No. So uh, 99% are MSMEs. You, so uh, in most of the uh, most of the countries, no? and they truly supported that move. The MSMEs play a very important role in the countries uh, uh, being, being able to create uh, equal opportunities. And to them, digitalization is the other thing that I presented. Uh, and uh, it's the game changer that makes uh, it the platform makes it uh, uh, easier for us to really get more people to give that chance to access money, which we are now, uh, many are moving towards that direction uh, uh, through Gcash, Maya, and in other countries, they have similar formats. So the debit card has really changed the way forward for people to really transact digitally. And of mm -hmm. course, mentorship programs are now moving online. Our mm -hmm. mentoring programs with DTI and DR are basically all online. So, and now through AMEN, the ASEAN Mentorship for Entrepreneurship Network, the same program will be done online with different countries participating in that pro pro program. No? And of course, market, which is a very important, where you sell your products. Uh, you've got Lazada, Shopee, and so many others coming out. No, young kids starting up their own market platforms. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they were very supportive. All ten of them. All right. What about any interesting developments, perhaps, in the area of agriculture? Uh, were it rice importation deals mentioned with some of the more technologically advanced ASEAN nations, at least in terms of rice production and agricultural production? So we had a meeting with the Cambodian business delegation. It was uh, uh, a side meeting uh, uh, on, uh, on top of the ASEAN meetings that were formally uh, organized. So uh, uh, DDI and, and Goni Gosha, we, we helped uh, them put this meeting together. And the president uh, um, gave his speech to, and this was maybe about 14 to 15 of the Cambodian businessmen, the top businessmen there, who ve were very impressed with our president. No? And uh, he said that uh, his first statement also was basically, uh, we ha really have to help our uh, micro farmers, micro and small farmers. No? And Cambodia, uh, is one of the biggest rice producers, you know, in the area. And uh, but the rice that comes, uh, the, the actually the rice that we bring in from Vietnam is actually Cambodian rice, and we were surprised, you know, to mm -hmm. to know that. So what uh, what uh, Vietnam does is they Cambodia exports the rice to Vietnam. Vietnam processes the rice and exports it to the Philippines. So. Mm -hmm. We that we discussed that why not uh, make the Philippines process the rice, no? So we can mm -hmm. buy directly from Cambodia. And 
allow the Philippines to, to learn that technology in rice processing. And I'm sure we would have a number of entrepreneurs here who would like to go in that field. That was one uh, the president mentioned. And I suggested that maybe they, they can also uh, help us, uh, help our farmers, uh, teach them on how to become one of the lowest cost producers of rice in the world. No? And Cambodia is definitely one of those. No? So they, the Cambodians were very open to it. And the press then also assured uh, the um, Cambodians that uh, he believes in public-private partnerships. No? And uh, he was telling them that uh, the ease of doing business uh, is there. If there are any problems, you know, you can raise it up to even with us, you know, in the ASEAN Business Advisory Council of Philippines, we will follow through uh, uh, what the discussions w uh, and the commitments uh, were, were made during that meeting. You know? So the Cambodians were uh, very excited, and I think uh, uh, we should uh, attract more of uh, our ASEAN neighbors as investors to the Philippines. Right. Very well said, sir. Now, uh, drilling down to specifics, were there any significant trade agreements or business deals that we can actually expect to materialize coming out of this uh, first trip of President Marcos to an ASEAN summit? Well, for the uh, uh, meeting with the Cambodian delegation, the business group, uh, that was the first meeting. So we will follow through and check out the level of interest that I'm sure there will be because they were uh, really pushing and wanted to meet the president. Uh, but most of these meetings were uh, on our side is uh, we meet our fellow uh, uh, counterparts you know, from all the nine other countries and we discuss many things. Uh, and of course, the, the, the discussions are mainly on ASEAN policies uh, moving forward, priority sectors, what we have to do in my case, MSME, digitalization, et cetera. No? So uh, there's a logistics, uh, uh, the legacy project of Singapore, uh, Ms. Robert Yap is setting up logist huge logistics uh, facilities in the Tennessean countries. And uh, he has a joint venture with us here in cold storage, and he's setting a huge one down in Cambodia. So we were encouraging uh, him to set up the same thing in the Philippines as well. So. Uh, every year we get to have these meetings and try to collaborate and see what our opportunities each one can can help one another uh, but what is very important is that uh, I think the president did a good job in really explaining his vision for the country wanting to see an equal opportunity for our Filipino people and being self-sufficient in rice etc and all of that so I think the message was very clearly understood by everyone all right, good to hear. This brings me, uh, Sir Joey, to my next question. Uh, the president said that he is still undecided on uh, the matter of his attendance in the World Economic Forum. Uh, do you have any insight on this? Are you, is any delegation pushing through with or without the president? And is he inclined to go? And if not, would you know why not? No, I wouldn't know. Uh, the World Economic Forum uh, um, is... Uh, 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 handled by uh, and the leadership there is Charles Schwab. I, I, I attended that well many years ago when I was maybe invited. So I, I don't know uh, whether he, he would. Uh, of course, it uh, is in the coldest time of the year in Switzerland. So it all depends uh, whether he there will be any conflict. But um, needless to say, uh, I think the president has met so many leaders uh, that were in the SEM and he's going to APEC, which is in Thailand. So and the G20 as well. So uh, uh, he'll be, I think he'll be meeting a, a quite a number of uh, people, the right people no? in, in the next coming events. So he's done with the CN, he's I think moving to APEC and then you have the G20. So all the who's who and the most important people will be there. The, the, the WF is a bonus if he attends, great. If he doesn't attend, I don't think um, it's gonna affect anything. I think what's important is he is meeting with the right leaders at this point in time, no? which is very important, especially as we, uh, we are trying to move towards a more prosperous nation. We really need the help of every country out there. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Joey Concepcion, Chairman of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council for the Philippines. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Sean. Thank you.